Okay, welcome to another video. What we're going to do today is check out Gnome OS, but we're going to do it a bit differently from some of the other articles and videos that I've seen so far. We're going to attempt to install it natively to hardware. Now, most people have been told to use the Flatpak version of Gnome Boxes, but I'm going to attempt to install it onto my actual desktop here, and I've read that it can be done, and it uses System D boot for booting. So we're going to give it a go. Bear in mind this is a testing OS. It isn't really meant for sort of mainstream daily driver use. So let's go next and it will let us choose what disk we want here. So we're going to go for this Drevo because I know it's safe to lose everything on there. And let's agree to erase all my files and apps. Okay, that appears to be all. What we're going to do here is pause the video because I'm not sure how long this installation is going to take. And hopefully we'll be back booting off disk into our freshly installed GNOME OS desktop. Okay, so we're back. That took absolutely no time at all, perhaps even under a couple of minutes. We don't appear to have any sort of restart options, it just says reformatting has finished. Success, power off your computer and then remove the USB device. When you restart, GNOME OS will be ready for you to set up and enjoy. So let's do just that. Okay, we appear to be booting up and we've just got to the welcome screen, so let's quickly just run through this. Let's press these little three dots here and type in United Kingdom, which is right about there. Cool, let's go next. Yep, the keyboard layout is all good at English UK, and let's disable location services. Right, time zone. I'm just going to, we can just type it in here, so let's say London, or we could just click. Let's see if that works. There we go, so it did work, I think. There we go, London. So let's go next. Um, usually I'll skip this, but I'm going to see if we can connect my next cloud as well. I will just have to blur out the server, so let's give that a go. Okay, so the next cloud appears to have worked all good. So let's go next and let's type in our username. Let's go for Tyler Nomi. Oh, we've got a R there. Nomi. There we go. Password. Very simple password. Cool. Okay, we're all done and we can start to enjoy Gnome OS. So let's give this a go. Right, so we have another welcome screen here, which is the GNOME OS 3.38 welcome screen. So let's also run through here and start the tour. So it's just telling you where the activities button is and clicking that will open up the overview to launch applications. Just type to search, which of course, let's say web and then hit enter, you can open the web browser. Uh, click to see t notifications, bang, next. View system information and settings all good next use software to find and install app so it, we know it uses Flatpak for the sort of software distribution i think it also includes the flat hub repository out of the box but we'll take a look at that as well so let's go next done so we've just got a notification for a software upgrade so let's jump into that now okay gnome os now available a gnome os update with new features and fixes so let's go to download and I'm going to pause the video here because I'm not too sure how long this is going to take either and we'll probably have to do a reboot after it's finished. Okay, so here we are at our GNOME desktop without any sort of fancy bells or whistles or extensions. This is the GNOME desktop as the GNOME developers intend it to be. So before we take a look around, let's jump into the about section just to verify that we are running off native hardware. Yep, so it's picked up the AMD Ryzen processor and AMD Radeon graphics card, 32 GB of RAM. OS is GNOME OS 3.38 and of course it's on the Wayland windowing system and GNOME version is 3.38.0. So let's get out of this and just quickly see what it does come installed with out of the box then. So I don't expect loads of stuff, mainly GNOME software. So we have GNOME boxes, GNOME calendar, Nautilus for your files of course, get it. Videos, weather, web, um, Epiphany I do believe it's also called is your web browser. So there's no Firefox installed out of the box. But we'll see if we can get a version of Firefox working through the flat packs. Photos. How's the extensions app installed out of the box though? So by default, it includes a few, which are the applications menu, horizontal workspaces, launch, new instance, places status indicator, and the Windows list. I'm not too sure how you're going to install more extensions on here though, because I doubt it has the um, connector for the GNOME extensions website. We'll perhaps take a look at that as well. So let's keep moving. What else do we have? So we have, yeah, pretty much just GNOME software here. And in utilities, again, just pretty much GNOME software, like GNOME disks, system monitor, 
and GNOME Terminal, etc. So let's open up the system monitor and see what the monitor says. What are we currently using as far as resources? So we're using 1.3 GB and it's cached at 720 MB. Right, so what I want to do now is jump into the software store and let's take a little look around in the software repositories and see if we do indeed have the FlatHub installed out of the box. We do indeed, so we have the FlatHub repo which is enabled, we then have GNOME Nightly which is enabled, the Linux vendor firmware service which is also enabled and then one disabled is the testing repo. So as we do have the FlatHub repository installed, let's, um, let's try and install Firefox, there we go. So this should be a pretty straightforward process of installing Firefox the Flatpak version from FlatHub and as you, as you can see if you go down to the sources there you can see it's flathub.org and the installed size is 217 and it's downloading an additional size of 774 with high permissions. So while that's installing let's take a look at the actual GNOME web browser. GNOME web, here we go. So if we go into the about section GNOME web, I do believe it used to be called Epiphany, I could be completely wrong and getting mixed up there though. Here we are. Perhaps I'm thinking of something else. Oh, there we go. Yeah, its code name is Epiphany, so it is the browser that I thought it was. Okay, so Firefox has installed, so let's open up Firefox now. Bang. There we go. So let's look at these side by side. I do believe Epiphany got some quite good updates during the GNOME 3.38 though, so it should be a lot nicer to use. Cool. Right, so we did want to see if we could easily install a couple of extensions. I don't think that's going to be possible though, despite it actually having the extensions application installed out of the box, purely because from the extensions website, and I do believe in the actual extensions application, if you were to go into the extensions it will actually direct you to the extensions website which is here so to find and add extensions visit the extensions gnome.org so we're going to go there unfortunately i really don't see this working though but we'll give it a go so we're going to install the browser extension done okay so let's try and refresh the page and see if it no so it won't work you need the connector installed which is usually chrome gnome shell but i don't think we're going to be able to get it to work for this video at least so let's just close that off now and just pretend that never happened okay so I've got a little X by my sound there I'm hoping that's just because the source isn't right so let's go into the settings and let's go into sound where are you sound and now let's change the output device to this oh my speakers are unplugged let's try the HDMI there we go I've got some feedback there so the sound is all well and good so let's get out of that so yeah, it's going to be basically stock GNOME the way the, the developers have intended it with a sort of all the moving around and stuff. And I do believe it doesn't need to be alphabetical order nowadays. Nope, so you can move things around anywhere you want. And of course you can create folders, etc. Shall we push the boat out and see if we can get Steam installed and perhaps play a little game or two of Counter-Strike while we're here? So let's go into Steam and download the Steam Flatpak install right i'm going to pause the video here because i'm going to log into steam and also try and play a game of cs and see if we can actually get a game going i don't see why we shouldn't be able to and there is the next cloud all working well and good perfect okay cool i'm going to pause the video here and then we'll come back hopefully playing a round of counter strike or something okay so steam is all installed and ready to go so we're just going to very quickly download csgo and just try and play a round or two on there and see how that actually works Again, bearing in mind this isn't meant to be used as a daily driver, it's purely just sort of a testing desktop OS. So what I'm also going to attempt to do is edit this very video on here as well. And of course the Caden Live is available as a flat pack from the FlatHub repo as well. So software distribution isn't really too bad when you consider how much applications are actually embracing the whole flat pack way of doing things. And I know Firefox is quite a recent addition to that as far as I'm aware. I don't think it was there until fairly recently. Right, I'm going to pause the video now for the final time and hopefully when we come back we'll, uh, we'll have played a game or two of CS and everything would have worked perfect and then we'll get to editing this video. Okay, so we've just played a couple of rounds of F CS Go. I was getting around 120 all the way up to about 200 FPS which wasn't too bad to be honest with you. So what we're going to do now is just quit this instance and wrap the video up there but before we do that 
I'm kind of intrigued to see how much RAM this uses at a fresh boot. I know this isn't intended to be sort of a mainstream daily driver, but my I'm kind of intrigued about what it might be. So we've already installed a couple of things, including Caden Live and the Flatpak version of Steam. And I have also started the project on the Caden Live instance in here, just to edit this video to see if we can get through this editing all well and good. So what we're going to do now, do a quick reboot, check out the RAM, see how much that's using at boot. And then we're going to wrap it up there, but quite an interesting tale of events so far. Okay, so we are back off a fresh reboot and we're using about 1.2 GB RAM out of 32 with a cache of 635. So that's been my look at GNOME OS on hardware. And I know it's only a testing operating system for the desktop, but it is quite an interesting idea of just having somewhere for GNOME, kind of like the way KDE does it with KDE Neon. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe and join the Discord. There's a link in the description. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.